Hi everyone, welcome to Caterpillars Beyond the Iron Podcast. I'm your host, Rusty Dunn, and we are at the epicenter of one of the world's most powerful tech events, CES 2025, here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm pleased to have a couple of my Caterpillar colleagues, uh, leaders in this area, Rob Haynes, who is the Senior Vice President for the Electrification and Energy Solutions Division. Also, George Mubayet, who is our Chief Sustainability and Strategy Officer. Gentlemen, great to have both of you here. Rob, I want to start with you. Our third year here at CES, and oh, by the way, it coincides with our 100th year as a company, Centennial, so what a perfect time um, to be here. Talk about the significance of, of our presence here, what we're communicating to people, um, why we need to be here. Yeah, it's entirely appropriate that we would celebrate our 100 years here at CES, a technology show that really features the innovation from companies all over the world. And innovation is a foundational element of Caterpillar's spirit. For 100 years, we've been helping customers pioneer and do some of the most amazing projects on the planet. And helping them overcome the challenges with that kind of work naturally comes back into how we do our work. And we're showcasing that very much, featuring all of the innovation that Caterpillar is taking on right now and actually putting out to work in the world today. And you look at around, and this show is really um, about the future. Innovation is the key word, a legacy of innovation as, as, as we talk about. Um, what's, what are we trying to tell people here? When they come here, what's some of our messaging with, with what we want people to walk away with, and customers especially? Yeah, and that's probably the main message is, especially this year, is everything that's in the booth is aimed at illustrating how we're bringing technology to customer problems right now. Uh, there's a 972 behind me here, and while the 972 is a very exciting machine itself, this one's a used machine that's been retrofitted with a hybrid. And the reason that's relevant to this idea of solving customer problems is we know in the energy transition, everyone isn't ready to go all the way to full electric. And this addresses some of the concerns that we've already gotten from our customers about range anxiety, the cost of the infrastructure that needs to go in and gives us an opportunity to bring that technology to them in a much more easy way as they can do it at a rebuild interval. George, I, as I was walking around yesterday, I overheard someone say uh, to whoever they were with, it's a great time to be alive and talking about everything that that's possible out there and the innovation things that are going to be happening how we're transforming um, you know our daily lives how we live and and work so speak to that a little bit especially when it comes to you know our purpose of helping our customers build a better more sustainable world how do we speak to that here yeah well first of all every day is a better day to be alive so let, and, yeah, let's start, for the let's record start. For the record, but uh, but having said that, you know, Rob talked a bit about about the customer journey and and wherever they are, and and in all the different parts of the world, wherever we are, even within the same country, within the same region, customers are going to be at different parts of that journey, not just on sustainability, but also on the technology journey, and that's something that we see here at CES. It's something that we see here in our Caterpillar booth, is that we're finding solutions, not for you know, every customer, but every customer wherever they are in their journey. And that might be slightly different. And those incremental gains are, are, or those incremental differences are so important to address those customer needs and what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. It, Rob, you started off as, as an engineer. I mean, that's your, your background. Reflect on, you know, the current work you're doing, yes, but we think about the engineers of the future that we want to come on board and how important it is in terms of what we're doing today, what it means for tomorrow, but I wish we had all of the aspiring engineers here today to, to, to look at this, but it's a great place, isn't it, um, for um, someone who wants to be an engineer and pursue this sort of exciting work. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps just hearing you talk about it. To be able to come into the enterprise as an, as, as an engineer at this time 
I mean, we are doing transformational work. Now, I wouldn't just limit it to the engineers because in fact, one of the things that is, I see that's quite different at this moment in time is just like this 972, we had 12 engineers for maybe 12 weeks work on this. We can bring the technology pretty quickly and pretty easily. The real opportunity is to be able to help our customers bring that technology to the benefit of their businesses. Yep. And that takes everybody at Caterpillar. And it's transformational. It begs of us to not only look at the products and transforming them, but probably equally or more important, the services and making it accessible and usable and something our customers can actually put to work in their business. And that involves the finance people, all of our dealer support people, it involves our procurement. It takes the whole of Caterpillar in moments like this to actually bring these solutions to the customer so they can use them. So I can't overemphasize enough how the things we're doing right now and the magnitude of the steps we're taking, you know, and for sure, like George said, it's a great time to be alive any day, <laughs> but it's definitely a really exciting and motivating time to be working at Caterpillar and the things we can accomplish. Hear, hearing you talk about that, I, yeah, I, if I had it to do all over again, I think I'd be an engineer, but I, I don't like math, so <laughs> for, forget that. George, let me let me ask you, and this may be a question for both of you, in, in helping um, tell people who don't have a chance to come here and see this exhibit, what gets you most excited about it? What as, as Take us through this uh, a, a little bit in terms of what we're showing people here. It, so we're, we're showing what we're actually delivering, which is fun. Right, um, if you think about it, over the last 20 years, we've spent about $30 billion in research and development. A big portion of that has been around autonomy. It's been about alternative fuels, connectivity, electrification. That's what we're showing today. And we're not just showing it, we're actually doing it, we're using it. And a little, a little thing that I did yesterday, I did a bit of mystery shopping within our Caterpillar booth. And I went to talk to some of the different people in the different stations. And, and I said, hey, what is this thing? Can you explain it to me? And uh, what was the most, the, the, the funnest part of this is the excitement and how they were able to demonstrate and show what they were able to bring to customers to solve their problems. Whether it was Vision Link and some of the solutions there from an equipment yeah. management, whether it was electrification solutions, whether it was dynamic energy transfer, all different solutions for different customers, things that we've been working on for many, many years, centered around our strategy, but also that we're delivering today. And then to Rob's point, the collaboration. Uh, you can't just do it alone. Uh, it, it takes everybody. We see that within CAT in delivering the collaboration. We have different people from different departments, different divisions working, collaborating. It's here within the CAT team, but also with some of the suppliers. How do we collaborate with them to bring solutions to our customers? So, the people, the collaboration, that's the exciting part. And then being able to deliver some of these solutions, that's exciting. And I love that point, George and, and Rob. We, it, it, it's, it's great because we have a lot of exhibitors here, a lot of competitors here, but that point about we're doing, we are, we are delivering. And I assume, you know, as you sort of look at it, what gets you really excited about this and what you want the world to know um, is yeah. along these lines. Yeah, I, the, that's the thing that as I go around the show, that I am very proud that what you see in the cat booth is the application of the technology. We aren't showing a future thing that doesn't exist yet. We're showing the same level of technology as a, what you see at the show, but it's actually at a job site. It's actually with a customer and nothing, I think from a comparison standpoint, we all have a tendency to want to do that, but that's the thing that I really feel proud about it with our exhibit here at CES is we're showing the world the technology in action, um, not just a hypothetical thing that might exist someday. That's right, it, and the thing is, before we sat down, someone had asked the question, how, how do you make it 100 years? How do, you, how do you get there? And maybe it's not just one thing, but it really goes back from how we start, the innovation. We never sat still, we just keep moving forward. So uh, George, Rob, I want to 
thank you for helping uh, really get us off to a, a great start for the new year, not only here with CES, but what your teams are doing and, and look forward to a full year of talking about our, our birthday, our, our centennial. It's great, so thanks to both of you. Thank thanks. you, Rusty. You bet. And thanks to the entire Caterpillar team. So long from CES 2025 in Las Vegas, Nevada.